Hey. You lost? I'm a guide. What do you say? <laughs> See, I'm something of a big and hard hero. All you have to remember is that everything will be okay. Cyrus, why do you white people keep doing this, man? Hey, it's we not, all gonna learn. It's not me. It's a very small nip. <laughs> yeah. Why do you black people all keep shooting each other? Come on, no, I'm not gonna say that. We, I, I'm, I don't even leave the house except to come over here. I'm not about to go wandering in a cavern, in a canyon so, by myself. Admit, there is no even essence of a tan on this boy. No, he, he sees sunlight. <laughs> Cyrus, Cyrus can barely get through the jungle gym down the street. <laughs> I'm so alone and go, go around running around in the, in the rocks. I'm so mountains. pale you can see the outlines of my organs from my <laughs> outside of my skin. <laughs> no, man, this is like I'm like one of those amphibians from a cave, you know. Like I, I, I guess, like like some part of me wants to be like the kind of person who finds joy in this sort of stuff. Like, man, the Earth, isn't it awesome? I'm just gonna go run around in it. I don't need to buy a bunch of expensive yeah. shit. D well, drinking uh, Mountain Dew. Yeah, drink, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do the do, motherfucker. Yeah. I'm gonna climb around and oh shit. <laughs> well, now to expand on Corey's point, I know that as an educated black man, when there's a, a story on the news, I sit there with my eyes closed when they're about to show the perpetrator and going, please don't be black, please don't be black, please don't be black. <laughs> now, when you hear a story like this of some dumbass who fell in a cavern <laughs> where a boulder fell on his arm, he had to cut it off <laughs> because he had told nobody where he was going, hiking all by himself, <laughs> so you sit there going, Please don't be white. Please don't be white. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little. <laughs> and then they show the perpetrator, and they show a picture of the boulder. <laughs> I, I'd rather yeah. be taken out by a bullet any day than by a rock. <laughs> well, yeah. And, and you the don't... thing is, you, you just think, wow, boulders actually do exist. I thought I only saw those in, like, the Roadrunner cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I, now that you bring it up, co-host, that was probably one of those Acme traps that didn't work when it was supposed to. <laughs> right. It stuck around the coyote, set it up, and just left. I know the coyote looking down at that like, oh shit, <laughs> he just kind of walked off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All you see is acne on the boulder. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> but yeah. And he was going like, shit, that one would have worked. But you know, <laughs> I, I, I have done some equally dumbass things, just, you know, not all out by myself. I've done plenty of shit in my life that by all means should have killed me. And everybody would have looked back and gone, wow, what a dumbass. <laughs> but somehow I miraculously survived. And we all did dumb shit when we were young. Thing is, this is the guy doing some dumb shit. He's young. He thinks he's immortal. And he finds out he's totally not. <laughs> Real he's, quick. He, he, you know, well, it's one way to get a cheap pie. Yeah, we're yeah. talking about the guy, Aaron, what's his name? Aaron Ralston. Yeah, uh, yeah, Aaron yeah Ralston. this is a true story. But yeah, a guy who just, you know, he, he's, he's that extreme guy, you know, and thinks he can just do anything. Because yeah, you're right. He just, that morning he got up, drank a Mountain Dew and oh, thought yeah. like, I'm, I'm ready to take on the world. His, hey, whole life, his whole life is a party. And it's just him <laughs> running around. <laughs> running is around this, the woods, running around the I, mountain. I, I, yeah. What I've seen all my whole life from watching TV, when white people drink sodas, especially Mountain Dew, they do think they can do everything. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, it might as well be like Popeye eating spinach. That's why I won't touch that shit. No way. Yeah, leave that shit alone, man, because we're going to find your ass jumping off the roof and I'll killing yourself. I'll stick to my Diet Dr. Pepper, which just says, oh, why don't you just order a pizza? I, I, I'm just surprised he didn't blame the Mountain Dew commercial for like his, for his whole predicament. Like like when kids like end up killing somebody, they blame it on heavy metal music. Right? Yeah, that fool, I mean, he got on his bike, <laughs> he's running over rocks and grinning. Yeah. He's smiling oh, the whole time. And, and, and popping wheelies and doing jumps. Yeah. Over turtles and everything that came across him. And Ran across a couple of girls and told them, hey, check out this trick. D drop from a, cl a cliff into a pool of water and all this kind of shit. I mean, this dude was kind of a badass. And then that rock said, shit, you ain't nothing against it. You ain't, you ain't got nothing on me. I'm going to show your ass. You know, I remember like hearing the story about the real guy. I heard him interviewed on Howard Stern and all. And I was just like, man, you're a big. I mean, like, 
I felt sorry for him until he they say like, well, I bet you're never going out there again. He's like, no, I, I'm going out. I do it all the time. Well, that's what they said. You know, his biography says like, yeah, he's still going out there and doing yeah. all this stuff. Right. Except they, he leaves a note. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. that, that, I wrote him off when he said like he'd go back out there again. I'm like, oh fuck. You, I know. I bet you he brings that. a flare gun yeah. with him now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but well, no, he, he's like he's like wrestling great whites and like jumping into volcanoes. I mean, it's like after you after you have an experience like that. I mean. Do you still really need to challenge yourself? Well, I wonder if it's going to get 127 hours part two then. Or Mother Nature is like, really, bitch? You did not learn your lesson the first time around? I guess he said, hey, I got I got another arm. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> he's all thanking Jesus and shit. And like God's looking down going, what the fuck do you think I invented Xbox for? <laughs> I'm sure like, yeah, but he thanks God. I'm like, I mean, God slapped his head like, wow, you really didn't understand what I was trying to do. You, you were <laughs> stupid. Yeah. Well, you know, I, but I, I would say, like, watching James Franco's portrayal of this guy. Yeah. I, I, I actually did. I was more sympathetic towards him. Like, I, I liked him. I mean, he was mm-hmm. happy-go-lucky. I mean, you know, he's out there. But at the same time, he was he was living his life and enjoying it to the fullest. And oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Not you're, hurt anybody. I'm you're like, envious oh. of him when you're watching it. Yeah. And, well, up until a point. Up until a point. Where you're like, oh, <laughs> yeah. man, I wish I could get yeah. that sort of, like, joy from, you know, this simple thing that he yeah. gets from me. And this total, all-encompassing joy this guy has. It's, yeah. even, I mean, wor- he, it's even worse when you're out of shape. <laughs> so yeah. Like, well, it's not an option. It's like so. a, it becomes almost like a fantasy film. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, Do man. they have a cannon with, like, an escalator? <laughs> yeah. this, guy, this is the only guy who can run into two, like, hot chicks out in the middle of nowhere. Nowhere and, and manage, care. yeah, and yeah. manage like go swimming with him at well, the same yeah, time. He, he could go pr- practically skinny dipping with two hot chicks mm-hmm. who actually seem to like turn around and be into him. Oh yeah, but he's having more fun riding his bike. Yeah, and, they say and, them and hiking. They say themselves like, "Wow, I don't even think we figured into his day." Yeah. And they're right; <laughs> they really didn't until later <laughs> when he's saying, "Shit, why didn't I go with those girls?" Tomorrow night, we're actually seriously throwing a party. If you want to come, yeah, you should come by, have a beer, kick back. Yeah. Okay, where am I going? Uh, it's about 20 miles away near Green River. You know the old motel? It's, it's behind that. There's going to be a mm-hmm, huge mm-hmm. inflatable Scooby-Doo. You can't miss it. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Cool. Okay. It was good to meet you. See ya. Bye. Scooby-Doo! Yeah! Rock on! <laughs> you think he's actually going to show up? I don't think we figured in his day at all. You know what? It's just like like that movie uh, Into the Wild. There's that point where like everybody's trying to say, "Hey, man, don't go out there. Why don't you just come hang with us? Hey, get with this, get with this hot girl, or just come be our son, or let, come inherit my fortune." No, no, I got to go out to Alaska. Boring. Yeah, no, it's, it's yeah. It, but you know what? I, you're right. James Franco. I mean, this is there's a lot of people in this movie, but James Franco is pretty much well. It, it centers on two characters: James Franco and that rock. You know? Yeah. And I think that might have been a lizard who made a cameo or something. Yeah. But James well, the, the Franco walked into the screen long enough to just shake his head. And go, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> but this is I pretty think much that lizard a, was Steve Buscemi, right? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it wasn't not. Okay. I thought his eyes looked a little too crazy. <laughs> Every gecko isn't Steve. Just but, most of them. But close you. enough. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, this is pretty much a one man show with James Franco. I mean, he's and you you got to think about it too. I mean, if this is a true story. This is truly amazing. We're making fun of this guy, but for for him to survive, I got respect for him. I mean, he was just so lucky that he brought. You know, say what you will about not him leaving a note, but he was smart enough to bring. You know his water with him and brought some energy bars and well, well he's you go an, hiking. You would yeah, have yeah you're gonna have that. So you're lucky to have that. He's an experienced outdoorsy guy, yeah. so he's not dumb. It's just like the odds of that exact thing happening to him, you know, are astronomical. Oh yeah. So it was like ah oh, shit. But what uh, the fuck do I do and now? Had that thing happened to anybody else, they but, would not have. Yeah, they would have found a body. Yeah. Oh yeah, they would have found a skeleton. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a hundred years from now. In fact, we wouldn't have found them. Aliens would have found them. Yeah, <laughs> that ship would have landed. It would have been like, what was this motherfucker thinking? <laughs> but uh, 127 hours, you got to think about how long that is, yeah, man. Like five plus days. Yeah, yeah, it's almost a week. And this guy was down there for that long. So you know, while this movie is not exactly in real time, it does focus on James Franco performing, pretty much talking to himself or talking to a camera or talking to a bug or something. Yeah. And James Franco really does carry this movie for the most part. I mean, it's not the whole movie, but it's a good chunk. And well, he's I really inter- enjoy it. Even him. when there are other characters, so to speak, they're in his head. He's interacting with his own memories. So there's really... There really are two stars to this film. Is James Franco, who more than carries it. You know, yeah. I was a little doubtful because he's always seemed like one of those guys, well, yeah, he's all right. He's not bad. He's just not, like, never going to win any awards. But now I'm like, 
maybe he will win some awards. Well, and then the other star is, of course, the director, Danny Boyle, who oh, yeah. managed to do something wildly inventive with such a limited little scope of actual events happening. Yeah, right. he, he's one of the guys, I think he's one of the directors that, you know, this day, he, he's, he's still kind of doing what Sergio, Sergio Leone and even Sam Raimi are doing as far as just, you know, focusing on one character and really making that world around him seem much more interesting than it actually would be if somebody were just to put a camera on him the whole time just being in that hole. But, well, I mean, the, the directing really does shine in this film. Well, it's his directing, and I, I, don't, I want to know who his editor is and whether he uses this person on oh, every film because the editing in this is what also – it was very creative – and of course, there's some. It's unlike Buried, which I admired for just being in one space and not doing any any flashbacks. I mean, this does rely on some flashbacks, but it's because of yeah, they're both bottle films. Yeah, yeah. Buried was a, like a one man play almost. It yeah. didn't have a lot of tricks to it as far as camera. Well, as far as all the elaborate stuff that Boyle is doing it, here, it was more about the the being a thriller. Yeah, like like the, the like, what's figure out what's going on, what's the mystery here. And this is yeah, like this a, is no mystery. It's a simple story. Yeah, it's a character piece, yeah. really. Yeah, but it's all about this guy going in his head and like you know how you would like you'd have that time to, to go through your life to reanalyze mm -hmm. your life how, how you got here well, all the yeah, things you didn't yeah. say that you didn't yeah. do and then you know going in, in fantasy land just like trying to, to not be in that situation and not being able to get out of it and just the torture and he does it creatively i mean if you go back and look at all of danny boy's films um you know almost all of them shows him as a very visual director very very quick and very creative with his shots like i said his editing is very cool so he manages to take something as simple as a guy trapped in a cave on a, you know with a rock on his hand and make it like visually stimulating it's cool well, yeah. well the thing is too is that um you know james franco what's great about this movie is it really does get you involved in this film i mean after a while you feel like you're that guy stuck yeah. with this boulder you know on your arm and you start i mean at least for me watching the film i was like wow you know i'm wondering what's going on through this guy's head and when and when they show it i'm like i would i would probably be thinking about the same thing even to the to the point where you know there's there's always t there, there always has to be time for sexy time. <laughs> you know, you know, your, your brain can only you, you can only focus on the negative for so long before you figure, man, I got to bust a nut. Yeah, <laughs> well, tell it was Steve Buscemi. Look over there. Yeah. Go, go away. You're embarrassing me. Which I can't I really concentrate. Really love that they incorporated that into this. When film it got too. to oh yeah, point, my first thought was like, really, dude. But then a half second later, I was like, you know what? This might be my last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, I, I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna get one, one, one last with him before I go. I'll tell you Sorry, what, brother, I, you're my sweetheart tonight. I, I know. I, <laughs> hey, I would have fucked that lizard. <laughs> Come close enough. You better run on somewhere. <laughs> you get raped. Why do but, I always have to be Mr. Pink? <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, you know the the thing about this film that is pretty amazing is that Danny Boyle had to know going into it that the audience was the whole everybody who saw this knows how it ends right. from the beginning that it's a given what happens mm -hmm. and yet you sit there the whole movie going maybe this will work and you know it's not going to <laughs> but you're almost praying yourself you're like come on man maybe this, yeah sure maybe there's another boulder later that hits them because i want them to get out of this situation <laughs> well, but you're just dreading it and the dread builds and builds and then when you finally get there wow does he pay it off oh with yeah like just shocking <laughs> distressing and that's that's there's one of the point yeah. in the middle where it's revealed to you, it becomes crystal clear what you have to do to get out of it. Yeah. And what you have to do to get out of it is almost as bad as just staying there and dying. Yeah, that goes to, to down the list to plan Z. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah y'all, yeah, that's this, that was the very last choice that he had to do. I mean, he didn't have it. And, you know, yeah. it's, uh, I don't want to go into it too much of how it's done. I will say it's probably not as bad as people think it is, but that's one of my biggest complaints about the movie. It's not even a complaint. It's a warning. I mean, really, if the thought of, of somebody having to cut off their arm disturbs you, uh, this is not going to be easy. Yeah, they're not going to soft sell it here in this no. film at all. Mm -mm. Once it I'm, gets there, who boy. And there was one part where, like I said, Danny Boyle with his editing, with even with the sound editing, there's one part where oh. you look at it, you're just kind of like, oh, no. And then this sound comes, you're like, eh! And you're like, oh, I, I, I heard, I felt it. Yeah. It was like that operation game. Yes, it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. My, my nose lit up red. They need parts. to replace that guy on operation with this guy who <laughs> got trapped by this rock. They should but, put yeah. like a dual shock in the chair or something. Like <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> <laughs> and William Pass will come back. And oh, but, the theater. I mean, but the thing is, yeah. I mean, you really, you start to stop, you actually start to stress out, you know, towards the end of this movie where you're just like, Fuck, will somebody like will something please happen to this guy to make him like not
go like insane and, because you you start you really start to feel bad for this guy. And man. the tension is building too. Oh, it, when it, you know it, what he has to do, I was just sitting there the whole time thinking like, when is it gonna happen? Just yeah. please, just get to it. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's, just, it's really yeah. tearing me apart right now, waiting for that that that, that crucial is. moment where he has to cut his arm off. And, and this film does does a great job of delivering that word. So many other films just can't even. Build right. anything they, they up like it. that. Yeah. yeah, this is like focusing on one guy too, which is sad. But I, I think another thing that that helps it is that, like, as much as if you might be going like, "Well, you dumbass, you put yourself in a situation." He fully realizes that. Yeah. He he, he yeah. Wants, you know he he knows it. He owns it. He confesses it. And it's like at that point when it's like it's not him being an idiot. You know, he just you turn back and go like, you know what. He just had a bad thing happen to him. Yeah, it's, it's really not. It's not completely his fault. It's. I hate to say it, but it probably could have been me too. No, as much as we're joking about this guy and calling him a dumbass and white people do crazy things, I mean, you know, really, it, you feel bad for the guy. And it's just like, yeah, it, any kind of accident can happen to anybody, yeah. and this just happens to be his big one. So, you know, I mean, this is this. This really is uh, James Franco's year, man. Between this performance and this movie. And I don't know if anybody else saw saw how I did. I, did. I thought how? it was going to be about a werewolf when you told me what <laughs> it was about. <laughs> like, like, I, I told him, I said, it's about a poet. He's like, what, it was about a werewolf poet? No, I was like, no, it's just a poet. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but between this movie and, and he was, the, Howl is not great, but he is great in it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think he's mm -hmm. also great in this movie. I mean, if, if I had to tell, I really enjoyed this film. I, I would say maybe for some people it might be a little bit slow. I mean, the, the way we enjoyed the film, uh, that might not be the same for somebody else who really just wants something to happen the whole time. Because there is a part in there where it's just James Franco just talking. So if that's going to bug you, the slow movie like that, it's probably not for you. If you're squeamish, it's probably not for you. But I really enjoyed the hell out of this movie, man. I give it a full price. I was never bored. I, I, it never even felt slow to me. It was always completely interesting. Uh, the only thing to me that was any kind of negative was at the very end when they show the real guy. And I don't know, something about it made me made, put it back into the perspective of like, yeah, there really just wasn't a whole lot here. It was just, you know, this guy and that thing that happened to him. James Franco was entertaining, but the actual story itself, meh. But still, I, I still give it a full price just because everything else that's so right about it. Yeah, it, it's uh, it deserves a full price if nothing else that, that it did manage to carry a whole film with such a simple story. And a lot of people are asking already, how's it compared to Buried? Yeah, they're both bottle films, but that's not entirely fair to even compare them. They take such that, yeah. different tacks True. in the way that they do it. But this is as great as Franco is in this. This is still a Danny Boyle film, and that's what you come out of it remembering. Like, wow, Danny Boyle is an amazing director. And that if people don't know, this. I mean, if you're right now, if you like happen to be that one person, like, who is Danny Boyle again? Slumdog yeah. Millionaire. Train Spotting. Train Spotting. Yeah. Uh, uh, 20, uh, 20, 20, 20 days later. later yeah. Uh, this so. is a the full beach. price movie, absolutely. <laughs> Josh, you. <laughs> the Beach. My favorite part was the uh, video game part in that movie. <laughs> what, in, the, in the beach? <laughs> yeah. There's something about that about, about this movie that, that made me flash back. Because I always, always forget he did the beach. And yeah. there, was, there was a couple things in it that reminded me yeah. of the beach, mm -hmm. uh, the video game part, but in a good way. Well, I'll let you know I'm still trying to forget the beach, but, you know, <laughs> in all honesty. But uh, no, I have to give this a full price only because, you know, I've always been looking forward to seeing James Franco really shine in something. And you're right. I mean, the majority of his films... Even when they're terrible, he's usually the only good one in them, and uh, I'm finally glad like some like a really good director got to use him to to his fullest capability of acting because he really did deliver this entire film. And you're right, uh, Danny Boyle did did an amazing job, but he always does an amazing job, even when he did stupid parts of the beach. But, well, I don't know if you, know. you uh, remember Life Less Ordinary too. Yeah, I missed that one. Hey man, he's learning as he goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, Why you always got to do all in the past? <laughs> <laughs> bringing up old shit. <laughs> yeah, but, bringing but, up yeah, old I, shit. I, I'm really looking forward to what this actor, uh, his next project. Oh, I'm not James Franco. I'm talking about the Boulder. Yeah. <laughs> you, know what, you know what? Danny Boyle is such a badass director in this film. I wouldn't be surprised if he manages to make an epic film about some guy walking in the middle of the night into his living room and stubbing the fuck out of his toe on his kitchen <laughs> table that we've all done at some point in our life. Well, you, yeah. I mean, I really like the – man, James Franco, I have to say, if there's one actor who surprised me – going against what I thought he was originally is him because I yeah. thought he was like this just moody sort of uh, uh, what, what was the word for it uh, emo. emo yeah I thought he, was just he seemed like he was a one note actor before yeah he did yeah, I was like, like, like you're good at doing this type of role but that's about it and boy apparently not but I, yeah he's he's a very funny guy I've heard him in I've, heard, I've seen him on Saturday Night Live heard him in interviews and I was like what turned with this guy was that an act that he was doing before because I remember in Spider-Man when, when it came out yeah. I think he was doing an, an act in interviews where he'd go on stage and 
just play like he was clueless. <laughs> yeah, seriously. And I was, you, I think you saw it that one time with me where he was just up there answering questions and he was just give these these off the wall crazy answers and just kind of shake his head like he was dumb. Well, and I was you like, know what? Okay. None of that matters now. No. Now he's a total rock star. Oh yeah, no, he's amazing. I well, love. See, him. I always knew. I always saw his talent. And, I, I, I I know he's just. He was probably just bored. He probably didn't want to be there at that. Event oh, now you ever. say that. Now no, you say no, that. No, you know, always, you was uh, you was like everybody else back in the day. I've been a very big supporter since. Freaks I've and been geeks. riding his jock from yeah. the. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? This I almost had this confused with another movie that came out. He looking at me like I'm about to make a joke, but no, there was a uh, there was. I'm waiting because there's always a joke at the end. <laughs> yeah. Well, there, there is always a joke at the end. It's coming. But, but right now, You're but right now punch I know. <laughs> ruining my time and my flow. You're no, just but, stoned. No, <laughs> no, that's your... I know, that's uh, mine. No, that, I tried with Rockstar already, but that just went in one of your... That, man, oh, for real, that was your that joke. Was your joke. <laughs> oh, please, oh, man. I'm about geez. to throw a rock at you right now. <laughs> but no, there was a... Do you remember that there was a movie that came out a while back about these people mountain climbing? And there was a guy who had to cut... A, a part of his body off too, like a finger or something. Really? Uh, yeah, it was it. It was a movie about two climbers. I think it was called uh, Into the Void. I, let me enter the void or into, uh, the, into void. the void or t touching the void. Touching the void. Back in two thousand three, yeah, it was about two guys who were climbing a mountain. I, I think I, I remember know, that. Everest or something. In other words, going somewhere they shouldn't have been fucking going. And one guy was hanging by a rope, and uh, another guy had to let that guy go. And uh, I think the, some fell on this guy on his way down. He had to cut a finger off or something. I, I remember watching a movie where it was another. Okay. I'm trapped. I got to cut a, a limb off okay. type thing. Mm -hmm. So nobody remembers. This? Not as bad as having to eat a was, soccer team, but still. Was, oh. was James? Was James Franco? No, he was not in no, there. I don't give a shit. But I think that Rock was in that role too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shit, is now <laughs> only watching James Franco films <laughs> yeah. from here on out. Y'all white people, y'all love to cut them limbs off when y'all are trapped. I mean, it makes me wonder if it really is true that y'all cut y'all's limbs off when y'all with an ugly chick waking up in the morning. <laughs> That's true. I'm missing a couple toes because one time this beanbag fell over. I just didn't feel like moving it, so I just cut my, my foot off. Oh, well. <laughs> this marks 24 hours of being stuck. I've been chipping away. I want to keep warm than anything. I have about 150 milliliters of water left, which should keep me alive till tomorrow night. If I'm lucky. So that's it. Mom, Dad, I haven't appreciated you as I know that I could. I love you guys, and I'll always be with you.